if you were to think about the, the, how the testing is evolving in the states now, what you saw originally was the CDC put out tests for the state laboratories to start doing that testing, and they're really built for small and mid-volume uh, testing. What you saw then last week, uh, the president announced the partnership with some of the big reference labs, the Quest, the lab cores. Right? So they're now doing high-throughput testing, which they're going to be ramping up to in the millions. Uh, very, very quickly. Uh, they're, they're probably near that volume uh, right now, actually, the capacity to do that volume. And then we submitted a um, – and those typically take one to two days to get those results back, right, because you're sending them to a central location. What we um, announced and, and submitted last night is a assay on one of our molecular platforms that we have hundreds of them placed across the country, mostly in hospitals. And what what our test is aimed to do is really allow that testing to take place in the hospitals that the patients are going into uh, with turnaround time more in two to three hours okay. so that uh, the clinicians can get the results much faster and, and act much faster um, on, on patients, either the isolate or make sure they get the right care. One more question for me that I'm going to bring in, Meg, but we heard uh, from officials earlier that they really want to make sure that these tests are solid, that uh, the analogy that uh, was used was we don't want any false positives for HIV back when that was uh, obviously the main concern. We don't want any false positives for coronavirus today. Uh, related to that is this uh, big call to make these tests available at home so people don't have to go anywhere uh, per se. You know, are you confident in the quality of the tests, and what about bringing them uh, so that people can take them at home? You know, what, what you see now is probably more of the collection happening in, in either drive through locations. You saw that being very successful in South Korea. You're seeing that now start in the U.S. and in varying locations across the country. Um, Certainly, we know that people will be doing the swab collection at home, but not the test collection yet. We are, earlier in, in our um, development pipeline, we're working on a point-of-care test. We've got about 25,000 point-of-care instruments across the country in doctor's offices and retail clinics. Uh, typically, they're used today and, and used a lot of right now for flu testing and strep testing. Obviously, they use it to differentiate flu versus coronavirus. And uh, we're working on a coronavirus assay for that. Obviously, that's a 10-minute test and could be deployed across 25,000 instruments that are about the size of a cell phone that could be are very, very mobile. But uh, that test is going to take a little bit longer, and we don't have a, a timing on that yet. But uh, something we've got teams working on uh, very, very actively. Meg? Well, Mr. Fallon, it's Meg Terrell. Uh, just wondering, you've submitted the emergency use authorization application to the FDA. What's your expectation in terms of when you'll get the go-ahead uh, to start providing these tests? Yeah, we're going to be ready to ship as soon as we, we get approval. We've got them in inventory and ready to go. I think uh, what's, what's really positive right now is, is that the typical time to develop these types of tests is years, two or three years. And the expedited FDA process is really moving this down into weeks. So uh, we'll be working with the FDA. I uh, look forward to hopefully being able to start shipping that in the near future. One of the issues that we're hearing about now, and I'm, I'm still even hearing this from people in the industry, that it's becoming more urgent, is that it's while the test capacity is increasing, the materials needed to run the tests are now getting into short supply at places across the country. Is this something that you're hearing from your clients, from people in the field? What is the status of this now, and, and how much will that affect our ability to be doing these tests? Yeah, there's a lot of work right now happening uh, on the collection devices themselves. Uh, we've actually, I know we've been working closely with uh, the White House and, and uh, FDA to be air freighting in that product in an expedited way to get more of that into the marketplace, as well as validating some alternatives to try to increase the capacity there. So a lot of focus um, on looking at some of those ancillary components so that we make sure that, that we don't have bottlenecks across that testing process.